Hi, this is Victor Uniform 2, November Fox Trot Kilo, and uh, handle here is Bharat. So I'm making this videos for the sake of people who are uh, trying to pass the ASOC examination, and this covers the radio theory part of it. Uh, we are going to cover the first unit of the radio theory, and this is the first video in this uh, episode. Uh, so in case if you're not subscribed to this videos and you're trying to answer the ASOC examination, please subscribe. Uh, this is going to help you. So uh, uh, the topic for today's discussion is electricity and uh, I'm making absolutely no assumption of any electronics knowledge for the people uh, who are viewing these videos. So people with some amount of electronics background or people who are experts in electronics might find uh, these videos very trivial. So please bear with me and I'll still request them to watch these videos and probably give some uh, comments on it uh, because it might help improve uh, the videos uh, which are going to follow after this. So to start off, uh, the first thing which uh, comes to my mind when I think about electricity is uh, one of the nature's most powerful uh, displays of uh, its power and that's through the thunderbolt. The thunderbolts have huge amounts of electricity in it and to understand how that happens uh, we need to understand something which is much more basic and that's and that is uh, what is called as a charge. So to understand what charge is, uh, we'll have to go very deep into a matter when you take any matter and you keep dividing it finely you will ultimately end up with a very small particle and it's called an atom so the atoms consists of three three particles uh, one is called the proton which is uh, the positively charged particle then you have the neutron which is the neutral charged particle and then you have the electrons which are the negatively charged particle the proton and the neutron form the nucleus of the atom and they are the center of the atom and then you have these electrons which keeps revolving around the uh, nucleus. So these electrons are actually very fast moving entities and they are always trying to escape the pull from the uh, nucleus and uh, the charges, the positive and the negative charges from the uh, proton and the electron uh, pull each other together. So the first thing which, uh, which you need to understand about charges is that the opposite charges attract each other and similar charges repel each other. So two protons have a tendency to repel each other and a proton and an electron has a tendency to get attracted towards each other. Uh, so the unit of charge is coulomb. So in the figure there, uh, the red thing is the electron with a negative charge, the green thing is the proton, the blue is the neutron and the nucleus is the uh, light green color over there. So the charge is uh, measured in uh, units called coulomb and an electron has a charge of minus 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. That's a very small charge. But a proton has an equal and opposite charge which is 1.6 into 10 raised to 9, minus 19 coulomb. So the net charge of an atom uh, is equal to zero. When you add the charge on an electron and a proton it becomes uh, equal to zero and every atom has the same number of electrons and the neutrons. So uh, now that you understand charges, uh, we need to understand the concept of free electrons. So uh, the concept of free electrons is very important if you have to understand what is uh, conductivity of a material and things like that. So uh, shown here are two uh, different atoms. One is that of lithium uh, with an atomic number of 3. So an atomic number of 3 basically means it has 3 protons and to balance it out we have 3 electrons. So uh, you know this, uh, you can always consider these electrons as those uh, naughty characters which is always trying to escape out. So this electron always wants to go out of its uh, pull from the uh, nucleus so it's a very fast revolving thing around there. Uh, so uh, what happens is, uh, in the electrons are shown in the figure revolve in orbits, in some fixed uh, locations. So these fixed rings are called orbits and that's a very strict rule which says that every orbit can be occupied by only a few uh, stipulated number of uh, electrons. For example, the first orbit always can contain only two electrons and not more than that. Then the second orbit can contain eight electrons. The third orbit can contain 18 electrons, the fourth can contain 32 electrons and so on. So now if we consider lithium in detail, so we have three electrons to fit in. So the first two electrons will fit in the first orbit and then the third electron fits in the second orbit. Uh, now uh, the pull between the outermost orbit and the nucleus is 
the pull between just one electron at the outermost level and the proton. Uh, so uh, assume that, uh, that there are three protons and three electrons. So the two electrons in the inner orbit cancel out the charge of the two proton in the nucleus. So we are left out with just one electron and one proton. So the pull between the outer orbit and the inner orbit is of just one proton and one electron. Now consider the case of nitrogen which has an atomic number of seven. So we have seven electrons to uh, fit in. So two electrons occupy the inner shell or the inner orbit. Now we have five more electrons. The so five electrons occupy the outer shell. Now consider this case now. Now you have five electrons in the outer shell and you have uh, five corresponding protons in the nucleus which are pulling it. So the force between the outer shell and the electron uh, and the nucleus is more in the case of a nitrogen compared to that of the uh, lithium ion, uh, lithium atom. So in that case what happens is the outer shell of lithium is much larger compared to the outer shell of nitrogen. So when an atom is, uh, when the outer shell is much larger this means that the electrons are moving much further apart from the nucleus. And when that happens it's much easier for the electron to escape. So, uh, so these are called the free electrons. So electrons which can easily escape the field of ele the electromagnetic force of attraction between the electron and the nucleus uh, are called free electrons. So uh, in the case of uh, lithium you have an abundance of free electrons whereas in the case of nitrogen because the electrons are much closer to the nucleus they don't have so many free electrons. So that's what defines what uh, when a, a matter becomes a conductor or an insulator. So in this case uh, lithium with more free electrons is a good conductor of electricity whereas uh, nitrogen with fewer uh, free electrons is a bad conductor of electricity. So this brings us to the first topic uh, which is also there in the syllabus of ASOC and that is the conductors and insulators. So uh, conductors have a lot of free electrons and we know what a free electron is. Free electron is the electrons which are easily, uh, which are able to escape the field of uh, the nucleus's attraction. Um, and uh, some of the good examples of uh, good connectors are silver, copper, gold, iron, etc. So uh, they are often used as connecting material uh, in an electrical circuit or an electronic circuit. Next, uh, there are uh, other kind of matter which are bad conductors of electricity. They are also called as insulators. So they don't have uh, lots of free electrons. Uh, for example, uh, the examples are like glass, air, plastic, rubber, etc. And uh, they are often used for safety, in, uh, for electrical safety and for insulation. For example, you are asked to wear a rubber chapel when you are working on a uh, electrical circuit. Uh, that's because um, the rubber is a bad conductor of electricity and it will not pass electricity through your body. So uh, now let's come to the uh, main thing. Uh, let's uh, try to find out, uh, let's try to understand how uh, lightning actually occurs. So a cloud basically consists of, uh, is, a cloud is uh, generally very neutral. It doesn't have uh, any charge initially. But uh, people are still not able to explain exactly why there is a charge separation which happens. But uh, possible reasons for charge separation is the movement of the air inside the cloud. So which causes uh, the positive and the negative charges to get separated in the cloud. The top portion is generally becomes more positive and the lower portion of the cloud becomes negative. Now the lower portion of the cloud which is negative starts attracting the opposite charge which is the positive charges from the ground up. So from the earth surface, uh, you have the positive surface, uh, positive charges we start collecting on just the lower surface of the earth and you have a lot of uh, negative charges on the lower surface of the uh, cloud. So uh, now uh, we know that op opposite charges attract. So uh, slowly there's a charge build up and there will be more and more negative charges on the lower portion and more and more positive charges on the upper portion of the earth. And as the charge builds up, uh, the force between the uh, pro um, the electrons and the uh, positive charges here becomes so immense that though air is an insulator, uh, just as we read it in the previous slide, uh, still at one point of time, the forces the uh, force of attraction between the positive and the negative charges becomes so immense that it breaks down the dielectric, in the sense that the current starts passing through the insulating medium, and the voltage at which this happens or the force at which this happens is called the breakdown voltage. 
So in case if you are not correctly getting what voltage is, uh, don't worry, we'll, we'll be looking at uh, voltage again in greater detail in, a, uh, in the next videos. But uh, for now just understand that the force between the positive and the negative charges is often uh, described as voltage and or a potential difference and when the potential difference between these two charges when they are great enough even an insulator will pass uh, electricity through it so even though rubber air etc are uh, insulators at one particular voltage they will pass electricity and that particular voltage is called breakdown voltage so uh, that's what happens so once the breakdown voltage is crossed and when there is enough charge accumulation on both the surfaces uh, you have this lightning bolt which is basically uh, the movement of charge from the cloud uh, to the ground or vice versa and uh, at this uh, this moment of charge is called uh, current so this uh, basically defines the first uh, terminology for us uh, we uh, and that is the current the current is actually the flow of electrons and voltage is voltage is also uh, known as potential difference of the electromotive force so it is basically the pull between the positive and the negative uh, charges and the force with which it pulls. So the larger the uh, charge accumulation at the two sides of the insulator or uh, two separated medium, the higher is the uh, potential difference. So potential difference is something which pushes the electrons and current is what happens when the electrons start moving. So current is uh, measured in units called ampere and uh, one ampere is when there is a one coulomb of uh, charge flowing through one second and I'll just refresh uh, the charge on an electron is just minus just 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb so that's the charge on an electron so for an one ampere of current to happen you have enormous number of electrons which are passing through that area so when that many electrons pass through one area we call it as one ampere of current and one volt on the voltage side is uh, so the uh, unit of uh, voltage is uh, volt and it's represented by capital V and one volt is equal to one joule per second where joule is the uh, unit of uh, work so when uh, you uh, sorry one joule per coulomb so when you spend one joule of energy to move a coulomb of uh, charge it, that's when you uh, that's the, that's one volt. That's one volt of uh, potential difference. So I'll just uh, clarify it in case if I've confused it. Uh, if you have two points and uh, you require one joule of energy to move the charges from one point to another point, so the two points are said to be separated by one volt. So uh, what we discuss today is charge. So charge is accumulation of these electrons or the positive charges then uh, we also understood what a conductor or an insulator is conductor is a material which conducts electricity and insulator is a material which uh, does not allow electricity to pass through it and the conductors basically have a lot of free electrons and what free electrons are free electrons are the electrons which are free to uh, uh, move free to break free from the uh, force of attraction between the nucleus and the electrons and that generally happens when the electrons uh, are more separated from the nucleus. So basically when you have fewer number of electrons in the outermost orbit, also known as the valence, electro or valence orbit, uh, that's when the charge, uh, that's when the electrons are, are called uh, free electrons. And when you have more number of electrons in the outermost orbit, the electrons come closer to the nucleus and then it becomes an insulator. So that's how an insulator and a uh, conductor is differentiated. So we also understood what breakdown voltage is. So breakdown voltage is a voltage uh, where, wherein the insulator starts conducting the electricity or the current passes through the insulator. So when whenever this happens, it's called breakdown because whenever this happens, uh, there is so much heat generated inside the insulator that it breaks down the ma uh, material. And then finally we understood what current is. Current is the flow of charges and voltage or the potential difference is the uh, force with which the electrons are being pushed uh, in a way the amount of energy uh, that the electrons need uh, to move from one point to another so that's the potential difference so one volt of potential difference is when you require one joule of energy to move from one point from that point to the other reference point uh, for one coulomb of charge so i hope i am not confused you much so uh, in case you are not understanding uh, volt and 
uh, Ampere. Uh, don't worry, we are making a video on that after this. Thank you.